Mary's song is a song we don't expect to come out of her mouth. Because if you remember the story, Mary is greeted by a holy one and told that God chose her to do something that she wasn't planning on. Something that she wasn't ready for, something that was going to set her apart from everyone and make people uncomfortable. And so after talking to the angel, Mary finally agrees. She says, let it be with me according to your will. And then Mary's pregnant. A young teenage girl is pregnant. And this is the Gospel of Luke. So there is no Joseph in the picture at this point. There is no fiancé that can rescue her at the moment. There is Mary and a baby. And so it says immediately after that, I, yeah, I'll do it, that she runs into the countryside, into the hillside, into the Judean countryside, where she goes to her cousin Elizabeth. I mean, what, what happens to you at that point? If you are a teenage girl and you're pregnant and you're not sure what your family will do. I mean, we know what used to happen when some of you were young. They made you marry the boy. <clears throat> but it didn't always turn out well. So Mary must have been encountering something for her to flee for her to leave her home and run to her relatives. And the truth is, she probably shouldn't have expected a welcome, right? Because this Elizabeth and Zachariah, they were the priestly family. They were the ministers. And sometimes at that point in your life where you are pregnant and didn't intend to be, ministers can be some of the most cruel people in that moment. And yet she ran there. And when she got to the door, not knowing exactly what she would experience, Elizabeth breaks out into joy. The first person to say that that baby is a blessing. That baby is wanted and desired. That baby is important to us, to you. And it's only then that Mary can sing her song. It's only at that point where somebody else has said, this is a good thing, that Mary is able to break out into song. But here's the thing. It's not the happy Christmas carols we sing, right? It's not those songs that we sing that talk about gentle, merry, mild, and meek. It's not the songs that show Mary lovingly holding the baby and cradling it. The song that Mary sings is a protest song that shows us a view of the world outside of our own interior understanding. The song that Mary sings invites us to view the world from a place where the holy is at the center. She begins the song by saying, I can't believe that God wanted me, wanted to interact with me, believe that I had something to offer to the world. But God chose me. Me to be the God-bearer. To be the one who would take God 
in baby form and help that child grow into the one who would teach us about a new world, a new kingdom, the dream of God on this earth. And so she thanks God for looking on her in favor, for allowing her to share God with the world. My soul magnifies the Lord. And then she shares a vision of who God is, of who God will be, of what will happen and continues to happen when God is at the center, when you look out at the world through God's eyes. And so what does she speak of? She speaks of the powerful, the tyrant being ripped from their thrones and the lowly, the lowly lifted up. She speaks of the poor being filled with food. She presents an image of the world where God looks from those who you least expect to be at the center of the vision and says, this group of people, these people, are the ones that are at the center of how I see the world. These people, the ones that have been left out and left behind, they are the ones that God places as the place where the holy will bloom and flourish. She sings a song of revolution. And that's why in many churches they stop before Mary sings. They share the passage and stopped before Mary utters a word to Elizabeth. They stopped with the blessing. And in fact, this song has been banned in many places and many times because of the power of its words. In India, under British rule, they banned the reading of this passage. The mothers of the disappeared in Guatemala were banned from using the words which they had placed on the posters that they carried as they challenged the government who had made their sons and daughters and husbands and grandfathers disappear. This song has been banned in any place where there's a fear that it will empower those who don't have power. Songs of revolution, which isn't what we talk about at Christmas, but it's part of God's vision. God calls us to hear Mary's words, to hear those words that challenge us in a new way, it's why one of the hymns we're going to sing today, we're singing the verse that they left out, which is the theme of this Advent, right? And the song that we're singing this week is, O Come All Ye Faithful, which I am sure you can sing the first verse and probably the second verse too. In this song, we see it as the joyful triumph, right, of Christmas Eve. But what if we took the words of, O come all ye faithful, and sang that joyousness in that first verse, but got quiet at the point at which it says, O come, let us adore him. Because in this song, it gets to a verse that we leave out that says, Child for us sinners, Poor and in the manger, fain we embrace thee with awe and love. Who would not love thee, loving us so dearly? The fifth stanza takes a different turn from the words that are in your hymnal and the way that you 
think of this song. Because it places us not only in the manger scene, but in the manger. Because there isn't a comma. There isn't a comma after sinners. So it doesn't separate the sinners from the poor and the manger. Those who have come to see the Christ child are in the manger with the Christ child. And this question, the question it ends on, who would not love thee, loving us so dearly? A question to sit with, to think about a question that makes it hard to sing, O come let us adore thee. For each one of us knows the need to be loved and to love, to forgive and be forgiven, to embrace and be embraced. May we learn this Christmas to look out at the world with God's eyes, to see the lowly that need to be lifted up and the powerful that need to be torn down from their thrones. May we see the love that Mary shared with the world. Helping this baby grow into a man that taught us, took that lullaby of his mother and sang out to us that I have come to free the oppressed, to free the captives. I have come to set the oppressed free. I have come to fill the hungry, to make the mute, to speak and the lame to dance. He came and shared with us love, a love that we are invited at Christmas time to welcome again and again, knowing that God can do new things always and those new things can transform the world, can take a baby and create a man who changes everyone's life. That God can rip the powerful from their thrones and lift up those who are poor and feed the hungry soul. And we are invited to see that vision, to participate in it, to be in that midst, to experience that love. Who would not love thee, loving us so dearly?